today's discussion is a uh, totally on vehicle electronics we will go on the basics of the vehicle electronics which are right now is available on our new vehicles and the diagnosis process what is this and we will discuss on that okay so what is today's agenda today's agenda is solely based on this five or six things which is a history of vehicle electronics very basically we'll go on that after that we will discuss the soul of the vehicle electronics which is the sensors ecu and actuators okay these three are the main components which make our vehicle electronic totally and after that we will go through the diagnosis overview and obd1 and obd2 i will discuss all those things later as well okay uh, but before going through some students i am seeing uh, they want this webinar in hindi so can you please write in the chat box in which language you guys want this seminar or webinar okay okay so there are so many language options are there i am seeing hindi english and tamil as well so let's mix those uh, languages i will try my best to provide uh, this webinar in english and in the same time i will do it on hindi for the students who are having problem in hindi or i mean english just save your questions for the last 10 minutes we will discuss on that and other students who are having this uh, questions on the upcoming slides please uh, save your questions for the last last 10 minutes okay so let's uh, move on okay so what is the history of vehicle electronics to know that we have to know what is the electronics first okay any vehicle electronics is basically all the electronic component that get power in the vehicle and which which is a digital media okay if i simply put it on that is it that needs some power and which is a digital media that is our vehicle electronics if you see there is a radio also a vehicle electronics it is the ignition also a vehicle electronics if uh, uh, the sensor that work in a vehicle this this all are vehicle electronics so every component that needs some kind of uh, power that needs some kind of electricity in vehicle that come that all comes under automotive electronics okay now when these things started coming into the vehicle before before uh, vehicle electronics and all the things all these things were totally mechanical right it was the year 1966 when this all started from bosch side bosch introduced an electronically controlled injection system which is called which we call jetronic system still we call this jetronic system and still we produce this kind of systems at the international motor show that is iaa in a frankfurt that is in germany so it was 1967 when this all uh, this all games have been started and after that 1978 came when general motor introduced its first ever electronic engine control system in the vehicle okay so it took nearly around 10 to 11 years to make it a uh, <clears throat> to make it intro introduced to the market and to completely uh, pr produce and manufacture and share into the market it took around 10 years that is 1978 the first bosch engine management system from bosch side it was developed with the name of motronic 1.0 which have uh, various versions right now available in the market in a vehicles which was introduced in 1979 it was a bmw 7 series vehicle it is a very famous vehicle if you can if you guys search you will find it so it came up with the motronic 1.0 system okay it was the first bosch engine management system from the bosch side okay so let's move on so what is the main purpose or basic components of engine management system or automotive electronics it is basically a component uh, basically a combination of three things first one is your sensors second one is your electronic control unit and third one is our actuator if you see our agenda our agenda comprises all of this sensors ecu and actuators ecu ecu is electronic control unit okay now what are the type of sensors that we use in a vehicle if i ask anyone guys can you name any kind of sensors in a vehicle
Okay, some guys are answering. Some guys are answering. Thank you for your answers. So there are various type of sensors we can see in a vehicle. Okay, uh, in this picture, if I say these all are the sensors: accelerator, pedal sensor, which comes in a vehicle these days, camshaft speed sensor, crankshaft speed sensor. These all are the type of sensors: intake, air man, temperature sensor. We all know to run a vehicle, we all need air fuel mixture, right? So to make to gain the temperature of those components is also made by the sensors. So there are various type of sensors. Now, what is a sensor? If I ask, what is a sensor? If I simply put a sensor is a device that detects in physical properties, detects the changes in a physical properties and collect data according to the changes. So what are my physical properties? Basically, a change in temperature, change in length, change in chemical composition. Basically, these are the our physical property, change in physical properties. So any device that detect these changes are sensors, okay? So as we have seen, there are various type of sensors in a vehicle, okay? But there are these eight main type, main sensors are there in a vehicle, which comprises the basic sensor elements, which are these, these are air flow sensor, intake air temperature sensor, throttle position sensor, water temperature sensor, camshaft position sensor, crank position sensor, knock sensor and oxygen sensor. Okay. Here it is in number six, it is crank position sensor. I have written it is, it will be crank speed sensor, but whatever they, these eight are the most basic sensor you will find in any vehicle in today's list. Plus there are more like these ABS sensors. Okay. Like this ABS sensors. Then there are fuel temperature sensors, the various type of fuel temperature sensor. There are NOx sensors, there are Lambda sensors. So there are various type of sensors. Even the coolant has their own sensors. Okay. Now, so what is the work of these sensors? They collect data according to the change in physical properties. Okay. And they share this data. To whom? They share this data to our electronic control unit. We call it ECU for uh, to get it simple we call it ecu but the full form of it is electronic control unit okay some companies call it electronic diesel control some call it uh, electronic control module some call it some uh, some companies call it electronic engine control so basically all these are same the basic thing is this looks like this device which is connected to all the sensor elements they get the data from the sensors okay so now let's move on to the some of the sensors. Let's see which are some of the sensors. And these are the sensors. Okay. This looks like this. Some uh, uh, vary, uh, varying to the other companies. This sensor, uh, the composition of the sensor or the look like the sensors can be different, but basically they are look like this. Okay. So this is an air flow sensor. This sensors how much air flow is been done in our engine compartment. There is a temperature sensor. It came, it's, uh, it's collect the data according to the temperature changes. Okay. There are camshaft position sensor. What does it do? It does the camshaft position sensor is designed as a single hall sensor that provide high measurement accuracy over wide temperature range. It basically measures the position of our camshaft. There's a camshaft in the engine. You guys must be know that. And this particular sensor measure that position. Okay. There are various other type of sensors. This is an oxygen sensor. It measures the amount of oxygen in our engine comp uh, in our exhaust gas. So to measure the amount of oxygen that is still left in our exhaust gas, we use these kind of sensors. Okay. Uh, I see some hand raises over there. Uh, I will request all of you who are raising their hands. Uh, please keep your questions for the last 10 to 15 minutes. We'll discuss over there. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Now there are some other type of sensors as well. This is a temperature sensor. This is a knock sensor. Okay, knock is a phenomena that happens in uh, vehicle engines. Okay, and due to that knock, there is a unwanted may, uh, vibrations happens in the engine. To define, to denote that knock or to <clears throat> collect that data uh, of that vibration, we need this uh, type of sensors. These are these all sensors are the vital sensors because they define or they collect the most vital information from our vehicle. And they share this all the vital details to whom? To our ECU, engine control unit. Now, what is an engine control unit? 
if i say ask in a simple manner what is an engine control unit engine control unit is basically the central controller or the heart of an engine management system okay it is basically the most important component of any engine today is there on the road rather it is a cng engine rather it is a petrol engine rather it is a diesel engine rather it is a ev any kind of engine you take rather it is an hydrogen vehicle any kind of engine you take any kind of vehicle you take this is the component you will find in every vehicle in some vehicle you will find it more than one more than two more than five more than 10 as well okay so there are various number of engine uh, ecu are there but what is the basic work of all those the basic work of all of those is to maintain the vehicle stability okay what by doing what by controlling the fuel supply fuel supply to the engine by controlling the air uh, air into the engine by controlling the fuel injection into the engine and by controlling the proper ignition ignition is the phenomena when our fuel burns in the, inside the engine cylinder and it generate power convert chemical energy into our combustible energy okay heat energy which is eventually run our engine now and this is totally a digital system because this is a totally digital system which comprises of motherboard with all the electronic components you can find on a uh, on a market it has all of them and it is totally uh, and this uh, system that is uh, totally control the vehicle components okay vehicle other other vehicle performances by taking the sensor element sensor data but now the question is how it control it have data from the sensor it process all the data now what is has to do it has to control okay it has to control the fuel supply it has to control the air it has to control the injection it has to control the ignition so these to do all of this it needs actuators okay it needs actuators so there are various type of actuators you will find in a vehicle like these are the vehicle actuators like glow plug relay egr solenoid valves intake manifold uh, manifold flap solenoid the abs is an actuator diagnosis or immobilizer is an actuator there's a various type of actuators as well so these are the sensors which sense which collect data of any physical change it provide that data to our electronic control unit our electronic control unit process that data and according to that data it gives signals to our actuators and according to that uh, that uh, signal our actuator works if you want to put it more simply you can find it uh, similarity between our body as well because if you take your uh, skin that is that work as a sensor right if you uh, if you touch any hot uh, hot water bottle or anything okay your skin will sense that it is a hot water bottle then your brain will signal it that please leave that water bottle over there then your hand work as an actuator and it will leave that bottle so basically that same thing happens in a vehicle sensor collect data ecu process them and uh, actuators uh, according to the engine uh, ecu uh, signal actuators in front they will follow the system, uh, follow the uh, follow the signals and they will actuate various kind of work in the vehicle and to eventually to do all of these things in solely what they do they actually maintain your ride compatibility these all are this all of these things are only to do only to maintain the riding compatibility along with the vehicle economics okay like how efficiently your vehicle will run how much mileage you will provide how much power it will provide all of these things depends on these three things sensor actuator and issue these days now what is an actuator if i say uh, more uh, clear manner actuator is basically a device that produces a motion after getting a signal in form of current supply from the control unit okay so actuator is also a mechanical uh, mechanical tool or mechanical thing which get current supply from the control unit and after that it can <coughs> actuate or produce a motion that motion can be any type of motion okay but there are three type of basic actuators are there one is electric which get electrical supply one is pneumatic which get uh, which get work on uh, using gas or air and there's another one which is hydraulic which is uh, which work on the principle of fluid mechanics okay 
there are various type of examples of actuators as well and this is a common rail injector okay every every cylinder every engine needs some kind of injectors to inject the fuel so this is the component that inject the fuel this is an actuator ccu signal the actuator or the uh, injector to open this nozzle through which the fuel will go to the engine cylinder so this is an actuator this is a seat adjustment drive this is a motor that has been installed in a seats and this is a sunroof drive this is a motor that that has been installed in a sunroof there are other type of drives as well there are other type of actuators as well but for example these are enough so the, uh, within this this is this one works on a electric actuator this is an electric actuator this is our this is also our electric actuator this is also our electric actuator but if i have to give an example of a pneumatic actuator that will be the air brake system of any heavy vehicle you want if you guys uh, remember if you guys uh, can uh, uh, if, uh, uh, in in on the on roads you see bigger vehicles bigger truck lorries these vehicles have uh, air brake system in their install in their air brake system installed in their uh, uh, wheels or in their chassis that work on pneumatic that is a pneumatic actuator okay in some locomotives there are also air uh, air brakes or air air uh, there they use air suspension so those are all you know, pneumatic actuators in high, if i have to give an example of hydraulic that will be your abs or any kind of brake that works on a brake wheel uh, that work with the brake 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 oil or if you want another example that would be your steering system hydraulic steering system so these all are the type various type of actuators that have an uh, that take an uh, a signal uh, in form of current supply from the ecu and according to that they will work on them okay now all the things that uh, you have seen here that uh, sensor this uh, electronic control unit this actuator all these things are nothing but digital uh, components okay why digital because all of them basically all of them need some kind of electricity okay mainly dc electricity to work properly sensors needs electricity to uh, uh, to 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 generate those datas ecu needs electricity to run or process those datas and actuators also need electricity to actuate or provide some kind of motion in a vehicle vehicle components okay so all of this works in electric electric power so basically all of these are nothing but digital uh, digital components if i say properly it, it, in these all are digital components and there is there is another way uh, another phenomena or reason why we call it digital electronics or vehicle electronics because this particular ecu or electronic control unit you see there it is totally programmable what kind of programs every vehicle manufacturer uh, uh, have specific uh, power output from the uh, for every vehicle every particular engine they produce okay but to produce that power output now in this uh, age or uh, 2023 we need uh, help from the sensors and we need to help or we need to process it properly or we need to uh, process that uh, data from the sensors properly to process that data properly this ecu needs some programming fitted in it okay what, what does that program do that does basically process the data and according to that processing they will uh, send uh, send electrical current to our actuators and so there uh, there are some pro programmings happen in a programming fitted in our uh, ecus which is why they are called the digital uh, electronics or vehicle electronics as well and this is why we call it digital medium okay now one thing is sure that there are various type of digital mediums uh, installed in our vehicles these days okay various types there are vehicles available in the market with more than 50 or 100 ecus only okay there are more vehicles available in the market more than 20 24 44 number of uh, sensors only okay so there are huge number of uh, digital components are attached in a vehicle now there's a thing happens what if any of these components like sensors actuators or ecu suppose ecu have some problem okay 
have some problem or have some uh, having some problem working with the particular area now what will happen before we had to do mechanical work to identify those problem or the position of the of those problems right now the medium or the com now but what happens now now every component is digital every component is uh, digital which is why you just cannot identify those problems by uh, by your experience or doing mechanical work on them we must need some digital medium to identify those digital problems as well okay now there it comes the uh, for the work for diagnosis now there diagnosis comes in the market what is diagnosis basically diagnosis is a process where we uh, where we detect the problems in a vehicle or a engine or other components of the vehicle like transmission exhaust system brake and any other major components like seat belts and like seat belts these are our uh, dashboards so any kind of problem which is happening in a vehicle <coughs> in, in today's life we have to do the diagnosis because diagnosis is a medium through which we can identify the digital problems okay now why we need diagnosis i have discussed but what are the diagnosis tools there are in the market so these are the some of the these are some of uh, these are some examples of diagnosis tools okay which are available from bosch side so there are various type of diagnosis tools available some we have to need we need uh, laptops to work with some needs uh, some without some laptops that we need uh, we only need the diagnosis tools but there are various type of diagnosis tools as well now how do you know there's a question happen there's a question arise before before diagnosis how do you know that your vehicle needs a diagnosis sometimes what happens if the signal is uh, if the sensor is not working properly they will not give the proper signal and ec will uh, uh, ec will uh, find out that there is a problem in that sensor but uh, now ec you have to do what ec you have to uh, let the driver know that there is a problem in a sensor okay so there uh, so now what to what will ec do ec will give you mil what is mil mil is a malfunction indicating light okay every vehicle that comprises a ecu every vehicle there where there is an ecu it will uh, it have a malfunction indicating light system installed in a vehicle dashboard okay whenever there is a problem uh, in any digital media this malfunction indicating light will glow up and the driver will know that there is some problem in my vehicle now the driver know that there is a problem but to identify that problem specifically okay now to identify that problem specifically the driver need to need to do the diagnosis okay now in diagnosis those problems come as a dtc what is dtc diagnostic trouble code okay so when vehicle gives you signal that there is a problem it will give you the mil malfunction indicating light but when the driver or anyone who is repairing the vehicle diagnose a vehicle did that will give the driver dtc that is diagnostic trouble code it comes in a five or six number uh, alpha numeric uh, uh, later in, it comes as a alpha numeric uh, uh, number where uh, there are some specific uh, values are in uh, letters and some specific values are in numbers okay but we will go on that later but basically these two things happens vehicle gives the mil lamp and diagnosis tools give the dtc using these two things we right now in nowadays we diagnose the vehicle properly okay and properly means every component that have some kind of electrical signal in it or uh, providing some kind of electronic signal we can diagnose everything like car's engine transmission exhaust system rather than that in, in uh, the fuel injectors air flow coolant uh, coolant sensors ignition coils throttle everything everything that needs some electricity we can diagnose those vehicles nowadays okay now after diagnosing those uh, digital media we can identify the problem and we can work on them okay now 
how this diagnosis uh, to do this diagnosis how we connect this our diagnosis tool to our vehicle okay now now it is here is the concept of obd comes every vehicle in today's market each and every vehicle rather it is a uh, four, four wheeler vehicle rather it is a three wheeler vehicle rather it is a 16 wheeler rather it is a 10 wheeler any vehicle you take there is a socket in it which is we call obd socket the full form of obd is on board diagnosis okay so the full form of the obd is for on board diagnosis right now <clears throat> every vehicle have this obd sockets okay now what we have to do we have to connect our diagnosis tools with this using this obd cable to this obd socket okay so there is a connection happens between the car's obd to the, our diagnosis tools and after that we can connect our diagnosis tools to any laptop uh, which has its software that work for the diagnosis through a you know, usb type b to uh, thunderbolt cable or bluetooth or wi-fi as well so there are various options to connect the diagnosis tool to the laptop and connect the diagnosis tool to the obd but the main <coughs> connection happens between the vehicle and diagnosis tools between using this obd cable as well because uh, using this obd cable only okay this is the main connection if we do not make any connection between vehicle and this connect, uh, diagnosis tools we cannot diagnose the vehicle okay so these two wires make the connection between the vehicle and the diagnosis hardware and the diagnosis software okay i hope i am clear till now now here comes the obd I I have said there are two type of OBDs. I mean, uh, there's a OBD cable or OBD socket that is in the vehicle, which is like the which look like this. Now, <clears throat> in today's world, we don't say OBD. Okay, in today's 2023, we don't say only OBD. We call it OBD two. So, what is OBD one and what is OBD two? But before that, what is OBD? OBD is nothing but on board diagnosis okay it uh, literally mean on board diagnosis it is a term that uh, we refer that is a uh, referred vehicle self diagnostic and reporting capability okay uh, a little later a little ago i just i just said that vehicles uh, whenever there is a problem in sensor or actuator uh, vehicles issue catch that problem and give some malfunction indicating light or mil lights okay so to identify those problems by doing self diagnosis we have a term to refer this whole phenomena that is on board diagnosis okay now why there is a obd1 and obd2 this question uh, this is, the answer is before 1996 every vehicle model or every vehicle companies used to make their uh, different diagnosis tools okay and to connect those diagnosis tools, they used to make different type of vehicle sockets. The diagnosis, the OBD socket that uh, I was talking about, they used to make different type of socket for different vehicles. They used to make different type of sockets for different vehicle companies as well. Okay, but so this is this is the thing before it, uh, it is the scene before 1996. But what happened after 1996? Vehicle, all other vehicle manufacturer they came into a uh, solution that uh, using this kind of uh, this amount of vehicle uh, with this amount of uh, or variation type of uh, various type of obd cable will uh, complicate the vehicle diagnosis system in the future so they came up with a solution in 1996 and they make uh, uh, they make a rule to make a single type of obd socket for every vehicle over there in the market for every company for every vehicle segment for every type of wheel like three wheeler they will also have the same vehicle socket uh, obd socket for four wheeler they will have the same socket for eight wheelers for 16 wheelers any wheel you see there is a socket is the socket is same but it was not uh, but it was not the case before 1996 okay uh, because every vehicle the vehicle uh, companies used to keep their own uh, socket system used to keep their own uh, uh, diagnosis system okay that is why the all the diagnosis system uh, all the uh, obd system onboard diagnosis uh, cable or obd socket or obd systems before 1996 are called obd1 okay 
so it is uh, obd1 is comprises of all type of uh, diagnosis sockets all type of diagnosis uh, uh, cable all type of diag uh, all type of diagnosis modules of every company out there okay and what is obd2 obd2 is every diagnosis socket after 1996 is called obd2 okay we will see the difference between them a little later but when it all started there is another question when it all started this obd there is a vehicle diagnosis this all thing when started see it is a 1980 when general motor introduced the first data link with eec engine uh, electronic engine control okay the first data link means first data link means in uh, eec was controlling the engine okay eec was controlling the engine and they have the uh, the first diagnosis tools which is obd1 okay so it was 1980 when uh, the first diagnosis tools or first vehicle diagnosis was there in the market but the engine control but but, uh, but the computer system which was introduced in a vehicle it was not in 1980 it was 1968 volkswagen introduces the first onboard computer system in their fuel injected type 3 models but this entire system was analog type not diagnose with no diagnostic capabilities so it was until in 1980 when general motors introduced the first link with the eec engine uh, electronic engine control it was possible to diagnose a vehicle it was possible to diagnose a vehicle but the limitations was there uh, we cannot uh, we could not uh, diagnose the vehicle like we can do right uh, in this uh, uh, right now in 2023 but there were limitations but it was the start of the diagnosis of the diagnosis okay so it happens uh, and after that after ford after general motors have uh, done that there are other companies also they started giving the diagnosis or started uh, controlling their engine with a eec or ecu or ecm or edc everything okay so it it gone up to 1996 where every company had their separate diagnosis tools separate diagnosis socket separate diagnosis medium separate di diagnosis softwares as well but after 1996 it was uh, all stop and in 1996 in europe and they came up uh, they came up with this solution that there will be a single diagnosis socket only okay so now what is the basic difference between the obd1 and obd2 the basic difference is in obd1 that only support car manufacturer in manufactured in or before 1995 so the so the range of the year is 199 1980 to 1995 all vehicles that came up with those uh, eec that comes under obd i okay uh, where the obd2 is uh, obd2 is uh, used for every vehicle out there in the market that came after 1996 okay to but there's a one uh, single thing one single thing that uh, to compulsory this uh, vehicle uh, this obd2 in indian market it was uh, up to uh, 2002 when indian market also uh, compulsory this obd installation in the vehicle okay but in you know, overall world it was uh, started from 1996 now <clears throat> the manufacturer space uh, now what is the another difference between obd1 and obd2 is manufacturer specified one car per obd per scanner so uh, so the complications was huge <laughs> huge so they used to do only one car per obd per scanner so they, they used to uh, introduce a specific scanner for specific vehicle as well where obd2 has a single type of socket system for every vehicle so one scanner can support all um, various type of different manufacturers for example boss scanners which we call the kts series they can uh, they can <clears throat> scan multiple vehicles out there in the market okay the they can uh, they can uh, diagnose tata motors they can diagnose ashok leyland they can diagnose either any indian market any indian vehicle you take name they can diagnose so it is a multi purpose uh, diagnosis tools which possible which which was possible only because this obd2 section because all car manufacturers started giving only single type of obd tool obd socket now there's another another uh, basic difference between obd1 and obd2 is obd1 depends on 
connecting wires okay connecting wires there used to be there used to be connecting wires between the obd uh, obd vehicle obd socket and the diagnosis tools okay but in obd2 segment there uh, there is wire that that whole thing uh, connects wirelessly using wifi and uh, some bluetooth systems are, are also introduced in some systems okay but wifi is the uh, most famous one right now so this is the difference and there is one more basic difference that is there which is the number of pins in obd is there are so in obd1 in the every socket uh, not every socket but mainly all the sockets mainly comprises of 12 pin system while obd2 come with the 16 pin system okay so it is a so in any vehicle anyone can see in any vehicle you will find the diagnosis socket with 16 pin system okay so this was all for diagnosis and uh, how to what is the basics of diagnosis and what are the basics of engine control uh, engine electronics or vehicle electronics okay so there are basically three components in uh, vehicle electronics which comprises of sensors ecu and actuators sensors senses some data uh, sensor senses uh, the change in data okay change in uh, physical phenomena they provide those uh, data into the ECU. ECU process them. ECU, after processing, they send those data to actuators, and actuator provide a specific motion about, uh, according to that data. Okay. And now we need, and after that, we need diagnosis because all these components, sensor, ECU, actuators are electronic components, digital, digital system. They work on digital phenomena. <laughs> and uh, to uh, to diagnose the problem, or to or to find out the problem we need to diagnose them before diagnose uh, to know when it when the vehicle need diagnosis and the vehicle uh, vehicle will give the malfunction indicating light okay the malfunction indicating light when you get then we do the diagnosis and when the diagnosis uh, when the diagnosis tool is connected to the vehicle the diagnosis tool then give the dtc okay dtc full form is uh, diagnostic trouble code using these two things basically the diagnostic trouble code you anyone any experienced or uh, any experienced uh, worker who uh, who work in a vehicle uh, line can identify the problem where is the problem what is the problem and every other details that are needed to uh, clarify the problem okay now the where the obd come because uh, obd come in the in this picture to connect the vehicle to our diagnosis tools okay so the mainly the obd uh, one is the system or the connecting sockets that were used before 1966 and obd2 are the all the sockets that has been used after 1962 so basically this is the basic difference between obd1 and obd2 and why it is used and how it is connected to vehicle okay and where it is connected to a vehicle it is connected to basically ecu using the obd sockets okay thank you guys this was all for the basic of uh, vehicle electronics and diagnosis mm -hmm.